What is going on, guys? We are back with another rebuild. I'm Madden 23, and today it is the Saints, and it is a realistic style rebuild. And of course, it's Derek Carr, all the stuff, but it's a little different in the sense that this is the Derek Carr Saints rebuild, where it's people like, really? Wow, who would have thought? But in the sense that if Derek Carr sucks and just falls off into oblivion, that's it for the rebuild. At this point, the Saints should be rebuilding in real life. If Derek Carr is even below average, this thing is the biggest disaster ever. That's not even true. It's not even close. But it's still a huge disaster for a team that should be rebuilding. They're against it in the contract situation. The, the thing that's kind of saved them over the last few years is that the, the quarterbacks haven't made that much money. But now they are. I mean, technically, if you consider Taysom Hill still a quarterback, the quarterback room's worth like 50 plus million, right? I mean, I know there's some restructures with, you know, Taysom Hill and apparently Kamara and, and Cameron Jordan and Demaria Davis, I believe, and Lattimore. But, uh, like, this is a team that should be rebuilding, yet they can't accept that fact. Uh, you know, I did a rebuild for this team like a two weeks ago I think it was like five or six I think we did like five full seasons did the thing the right way maybe check that out because this could end up crashing and burning when you have a 77 overall 32 year old star dev quarterback who already regressed three points and I had to fix him making uh like 37 38 million per year if he sucks we can't exactly move on from him we they, they've guaranteed him 100 million so <laughs> it's not great it's not great of course as a Packers fan in real life, I love it. Now, I would say, you know, s small segue to the Rodgers situation because, you know, it's relevant, right? The quarterback, uh, I wouldn't say carousel, but the free agency list kind of, in a way, uh, and it's kind of important. Uh, you know, Derek Carr being off the board early obviously helps the Packers with Rodgers' trade value. At this point, my guess is teams are like, we're not trading a ton of stuff for a one-year at-best quarterback. And Green Bay is like, well, we're not trading Rodgers for next to nothing because we're going to have to take the hit unless you're going to be willing to take the hit. If I'm Green Bay, if a team even offers me a third-round pick to take all the money off of our hands with Rodgers, like I'm not 100%. You know, I'm not the best money expert on this stuff. I'd take it instantly. Because unless you're a team that's like maybe the Buccaneers or you're ready right now, why would you want to trade anything more than like a high second for Rodgers when I'm seeing like stupid Packers fans are like, would you take three first round picks, Max Crosby, Devontae Adams, all of the wives of the players, their children? It's like, dude, yeah, you would because, okay, okay, enough for Rodgers. <laughs> all right. But Derek Carr and this Saints team, what a disaster. The Saints can't let go. If you're a Saints fan, I really am curious to see what you think. I really want to know what you think because maybe you're in this, I wouldn't say denial stage because the Saints have stayed competitive for the most part, but like, I, I think it's just clearly obvious. You you just rebuild, dude. And another thing I'm going to mention, uh, it's super annoying and maybe I should be doing this kind of thing as well, speaking of as a quote-unquote influencer, but the, the stupid things where it's like, look at the, the Saints offense now, super great, look at this, what do you think? Those like baited out, like clearly this is a trash offense still, what are you talking about? Kamara is not, you know, he didn't play that well and all they have is Olave and Derek Carr is like average, it's like... They're baiting you. They want you know interactions on their page. They're baiting you. It's like, I can't even blame them because it works, but it's just like, it's so annoying. I'm just curious. I just really want to know what you think. If you're a Saints fan or in general, what do you think? And while you're down there, maybe leave a like and subscribe. And of course, free agency is irrelevant to us. And as much as I love a good rebuild or a good realistic rebuild, I'm not about to go and try and like pull off some real life restructuring magic I know a little bit about that kind of stuff, but I am nowhere near the gurus, these teams like the Saints and the Packers and these like restructuring gods where it seems like they have unlimited money, uh, you know, how they do that. So I'm just going to play within the confines of the game, which is basically hoping uh, really expensive players start to come down a little bit on their uh, guaranteed money. Like Winston, uh, I don't know like what his like kind of future penalty is, like if you can post June 1st him or something, whatever terminology they use. But we really need help in that category because we are broke. Now, while I wouldn't put it past them because they have a little bit of a history of doing this, not even over the last like, couple seasons, but last like half decade, it seems, uh, I'm not going to trade up. I'm not going to trade up with the Saints. I may even look to trade down as, once again, I see this as a rebuilding team 
but we have Derek Carr, basically. Tyree Wilson almost always goes number one overall because EA is just crazy. I would love to see a trade down from the Bears, but honestly, uh, the Jalen Carter situation, speaking of, may change that. Now, I know there's a lot of reports that you know it won't actually change his draft stock that much. Maybe he won't be the number one defender anymore, but it won't change it that much. But are the Bills, uh, the Bears anyways, willing to risk that? You know, I, I don't know. I don't, do you just take Will Anderson? I kind of felt like that maybe should have been the choice all along anyways, but I don't know. Uh, but let's go on to pick 30 and see who is there. Of course, running back goes all the way up to 30 and uh, or 29. And the Bengals may be uh, thinking about that. <laughs> Definitely thinking about that. Uh, Antonio Johnson, there's so many different options. Wide receiver is obviously one of the, the bigger options on this team. Dalton Kincaid would be interesting. Same with Darnell Washington. Uh, getting like Jimmy Graham, but like better blocker. I mean, they're not really the most similar, but I see the size and I just start throwing Jimmy Graham out, you know, out there. So, so many different options, but man, it is tough not to just trade down. Kayshawn Bouti uh, would be a great option, like middle to late second. Could get Tucker Craft, who's got some athleticism. I put him on my scouting list further and they were just like, well, who cares? We don't really care what you think, but more athleticism at tight end would be great. Uh, and then on top of that, we can get a pass rusher. What are they both two to three? So basically, if I want to land three players, which I really do, I have to trade down. But even then, we may miss out, which definitely worries me. But I really want a pass rusher. Derek Hall or Andre Carter would be great. And then DT Pickens or even Wooden maybe. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of mid around. Here's a day three. Oof. There's a little bit of mid around here. Whereas if I just take one of the guys right now... You know, specifically like one of the tight ends, like Dalton Kincaid or something. That's a lot. I would say that's a little bit of a crazy one for the tight for the Saints of all their needs to go tight end. But maybe you just double down on offense like you did with uh, Derek Carr. I don't know. And while that pick is a next year third, we could probably use that to trade up. So I am going to go to the Browns, gain a mid level third, which only drops us back to ten, which should, in theory, not a bad choice with Keon White. Uh, should, in theory, give us uh, our players still, which would be great. Also, maybe some of the guys we were looking at with that pick at 30 are still there, but it doesn't really seem to be the case. Oh, I was about to say, and Kayshawn Bouti goes to the Saints. I completely forgot we had that pick, and I just skipped. I was like, oh, let's keep trading down until, you know, keep moving on and something happens. Yeah, well, Kayshawn Bouti is uh, now uh, our wide receiver, so adding a little bit more speed, although, I, you know, it's... I can argue that maybe that's not fully the case as didn't run the best in real life. Uh, but obviously, you know, running super well the combine or not super well the combine, if you have good tape, it doesn't matter as much. But definitely a, a risky prospect. But uh, I kind of forgot that it was our pick. We skipped. And what I was going to plan on doing is just wait until him or A.T. Perry goes. And uh, whatever went, went first, which it would have been Booty anyways. I would have taken the other. We actually went A.T. Perry in the last rebuild, and I still like that for them. Um, but let's go with Tucker Craft here in the second. Some of these picks are a little bit higher than where they're projected in real life, but it is Madden. We're basing them off the prospects we have here, which, of course, Tucker Craft probably going to be a bit slower than that in the next game. But I like the pick. We really needed a damn tight end, and here we are. Uh, once again, maybe not really going for the trenches that they need, especially on the defensive side of the ball, but still landing very solid players. I actually don't know what Booty's dev is, so that'll be an interesting one. And I imagine Derek is going to go before uh, Carter, right? And we're going to trade a, a third this year, 74, a fifth this, and a sixth next to the Lions for 56, which is a little... Oh, man, a little bit of a jump, but still uh, fair enough, I suppose. And we're going to be taking an edge rusher with this pick. I actually don't know who I want more. But I think because of athleticism, I'm going to take Derek Hall, who obviously looks really good here. 22 years old. Hit an development trade. 83 speed, 85, uh, 2 XL. And based on his uh, combine in real life, of course. I don't know why I said that in real life. I uh, think he deserves to be faster than that. I might alter some of our players based on their combines. I kind of want Booty to still be decently fast, though, as I don't think that combine number, you know, it, just, it doesn't take much, right? Like, you don't stretch properly, take the wrong step. We've seen a bunch of players drifting. You know, it, it doesn't take much for the number to look bad when, in reality, that's not, you know, them. That's it's just the way it is. 
Um, and as far as what we want to do for the rest of this draft, we need O line, but I think we can just wait till the next round. Although Wooden's still there, wouldn't hate having him. And you could say, oh, why would the Giants take a risk on a pick that they don't know anything about? But at the end of the day, we made a trade down that should have involved the Browns third this year, and it wasn't. So we had that taken at pick 76 evaluation. So we're basically arguing that this is basically, you know, this year anyways, technically, uh, as you know, it's 76. So we took the value that it was a 76. They have to take the value that it's a 76. And A.T. Perry is still there, but I just, I don't think that's going to happen. I think the 40 he ran is just good enough for somebody to be like, ooh. But this pick, even though I'm not a huge fan of Pickens here, I think we have no choice but to add to the D-line, and we're going to do that with Pickens. Normal development trip, but he should be good enough to at least have a chance with a breakout. All right, so I have a bunch of players here at 10 in the fourth round. I'm debating on who the hell I want, though. I think we need a guard so TJ Bass wouldn't be the worst call. But once again, I haven't, like, I paid attention to the combine, but I, you know, it's still what scouts think and what teams think. So I don't really know how many players have, like, moved too much. I don't even know how much uh, this class has been updated, this Bengals class. But some of them, unless he was just mad great at predicting, uh, are look pretty updated. Like, uh, Smith was never close to, like, uh, you know, a 4 4 in any of the classes he was like you know, maybe like a four six or something like that so i just figure like with that knowledge that uh you know it has been updated to some extent so if you see something where it's like oh this guy's not even projected to be drafted oh this guy's not even close to uh gonna be there in the third i apologize i'm just kind of going off the game which you know in fairness that's kind of what the ais are doing so with the knowledge i think we're gonna go tj bass who uh, i am not even sure where he's projected if at all. We're going to trade a fifth this, a fifth next for the Browns. Fourth this year, which we're going to be taking Owen Papoey, who obviously ran a blazing 40 time. Uh, probably moves up uh, on the mock draft databases a little bit. Uh, I've seen him recently. He's like around like a fourth. I imagine it's probably higher than that. I mean, that's just insane speed. That's who we're going to take, though. Um, and I don't know how fast he is here. 90 speed, 90 excel. Uh, I don't think he was ever that fast either. Like 87 speed, maybe. At the end of the seventh round, really wanted a running back. I don't know if we're going to see one, especially if we're going to try to, like, compare it to real life. I'm going to just hope there was, like, you know, some four fives in there, four sixes, that I'm like, oh, I'll just take one of these. Nobody wants them because they're slow. Oh, what's that? You're the next Damian Pierce? Oh, thanks. So we're negative money. We have 50 out of 53 players, and we have a draft class that looks kind of mid. <laughs> what is uh, Booty's dev? Ooh, normal. Nice. Loved that pick. Yeah, I was really just going to move on and and let it just probably go to A.T. Perry, and I just it just didn't happen. I'm not going to change any of the speeds because uh, it is what it is. We take an L with Derek Hall, but we take a dub with Kraft and uh, Booty, I suppose. So uh, Kraft, I can't imagine, would be higher than Star. I was even surprised he had Star. I just wanted somebody athletic that I can actually build on rather than the old tight ends we currently had. I suppose 85 looks kind of cool, and he is Star as expected. Uh, I mean, there's not really much to show here. It's a pretty, it's a pretty Midonian draft class. And yeah, with the the restructurings, it's just it's a it's a nightmare. I just hope he retires, dude. <laughs> there's so many restructures in there. It just hurts. Like, why can't Andres Peach just like go away? He's too expensive, bro. As expected, we have easily the worst defensive tackle situation, probably the worst defensive line situation in the entire league. Booty, please, dude. Just just get, like, a freaking thousand breakouts. I need it desperately. The offense doesn't look the worst, though. I was expecting more bad. Uh, and then looking at the defense, wow. That's a bunch of talent, especially the DT spot, like we said. This is a group of winners, if I've ever seen it. This is what we were hoping for. Zach Pickens is now star dev, and he gets 10k XP. So, we're not completely broke. I can actually afford to, like, feed some people's kids, just not all of them. Uh, Cameron Jordan may just be retired, but I kind of need an elite rusher, because we have literally nothing going on for ourselves right now. Uh, and then Will Lutz, I mean, it's just like, when you're broke as hell, you can't even get in field goal range. Does it matter really how good or bad your kicker even is? Probably not, right? So, I'm going to try to save as much money as possible... Cesar Ruiz, not a terrible contract, not a terrible player. I'd be willing to do the one year. I think, oh, he's playing really well. Is he starting with those numbers? It's not bad. 
Uh, yeah, I'm willing to pay him a one-year five. I'm surprised he accepted that. A one-year five is great for us. Okay, so, uh, new rebuild in a way. I, I don't think we've ever had Zach Pickens do his thing, and here he is doing his thing. Turns out all you have to do is just give him literally no talent around him, and he just does the rest. Headed to playoffs, and like I said, we're going to stay competitive for no reason at all, and finish the season with a... 7-10 season, which is still considering the talent we have pretty competitive Matt Ryan the league leader because he joined the Buccaneers that playbook is kind of juice but anytime I use it it just sucks but yeah uh, pretty good start and then kind of just didn't really finish super well middle to you know near the end of the middle I don't know the end of the middle even means but let's take a look at the numbers Derek Carr was okay I mean those are very Derek Carr numbers I suppose if you're talking about realism I mean, if I were to say what those numbers should be, probably low 80s, high 70s. So I guess we'll fix him in that category, but uh, not really the greatest season. Of course, Olave was amazing. Hardy was actually really good. And the booty with, you know, same amount of catches pretty much, a lot less yards per catch. Uh, I tried to pay Hardy, didn't really work. And then Kraft, uh, not really doing super well, but that's because of the scheme. So I might, you know, call it crazy, call it cheesing. I might actually put the Buccaneers playbook on next season. I don't know. It's just like you pay that much money for Derek Carr. It's like you kind of feel like you should be passing the ball a lot more, right? But look at the rookies. Derek Hall and Pickens were actually pretty damn good, specifically Pickens. Obviously, he had two dev ups. Interceptions were pretty tame. Kicking, I mean, I guess it's not really worth keeping him. And then Gillikin, who I can't remember if I actually paid or not. Didn't really have that great of a year, to be honest. Lamar Jackson was your league MVP with Matt Ryan not too far behind Rookie of the year, Pickens. Is he an X-Factor? Did Pickens go from normal to X-Factor in one season? There's no way, right? Also, Seattle going Anthony Richardson after the Geno Smith contract is quite interesting. But obviously, in-game's a little different as Geno's a little bit on the older side. They probably didn't even re-sign him because he regressed super hard. Wait, hold up. Why does it say we're broke? I, I ignored everything. Eagles versus the Chargers. Not the furthest thing from the truth in real life, right? Like, I, I don't think it's far off. Very well could happen, and it's a very close Eagles Super Bowl win. Take a look at these dev ups. Hopefully, Alave is a superstar. Which he is. Uh, of course, Derek Carr wouldn't have went up, but here is Mr. Olave with superstar dev spin cycle. He's got one superstar wide receiver boot. He was like, you know, wasn't the highest pick in the world, anyways, but definitely uh, not the year one we were hoping he would have. And then defensively, did actually have some dev ups, including Pickens, who had. One of the best uh, rookie seasons I've had in Madden Sim in a while. You know, there's guys that have done 15 plus sacks, whatever, getting a dev up. But I don't know if I've had a guy go from normal to X Factor in one season. I mean, talk about a hero of this thing. So, proving once again, it doesn't really matter where they start if they can get some dev ups. I mean, this guy's talented. He is talented. He's like a 79 overall X Factor rookie. I mean, talk about just a guy. You know, just talk about a dude. 80 overall, 92 power move, or 92 power move, 82 power move with a plus 2 to power move. He's great already. I mean, he's went up to strength. He's him. He's him. What can I tell you? We had some dev ups for the, defen uh, the defensive uh, linebackers, uh, Werner and Papoe, uh, which is not bad at all. Really need every dev up we can get, especially for these normal dev guys. And yeah, I'm not sure where we're going to draft, but uh, not the worst season, considering. Not the worst. But losing uh, Cameron Jordan, which I assume we will be doing, uh, is definitely going to be of a bit of a hit. I imagine he was a big part of the reason why these youngsters played as well as they did. 45 mil, who do we have to resign? Uh, Cameron Jordan is still here. He had a really good year. The most I'd probably do is like 17, though, for his... I mean, his ratings aren't that bad, actually. 17? 17 at your age isn't, like, the most disrespectful, is it? I mean, I don't see why, you know, it seems okay to me. Thanks. Okay, I guess he's not interested, which was definitely more than he, uh, you know, it said was a fair offer. And then Hardy, I did try to go with a two-year nine, which you could see here, but the best I'm doing is a two-year 11. It is what it is. I think it was more of a scheme situation than him just being a god, so... It is what it is, Caitlin Barnes. I think we're just going to let all these guys go. Also curious to see what kind of, uh, you know, kind of release situation we have. Could let Winston go. Could let uh, Andres Pete go, which definitely would help the quote-unquote rebuild. As, you know, even though we paid to Derek Carr, 
Uh, Winston's gone, actually. When the hell did that even happen? That kind of makes me sad because I'm like, I was expecting some money to just show up and it's not here. And it's like, well, where is it? And then even worse is Demario Davis retired. Oh my god, this is just L after L. Adebo is terrible. Lante Taylor is old and he's only normal. Uh, yeah, I mean, unless Derek Carr goes ham, this is gonna. This just seems like a fail rebuild. Even though it's amazing that we got a crazy season out of Pickens, it's just not enough. So we have 45 mil. There might have been some more names that we just didn't get rid of that we could have. Uh, T. Higgins is a guy that you would expect to have already been traded and like signed unless they tagged him and now he's in free agency. But even then, they probably would have tagged him again and then traded him. So it's like, can you really make the argument that it's fair to go for him? Wide receiver's not bad, though. Booty was like, you know, it's like a mid-second, so him going to slot wide receiver wouldn't be, you know, it's definitely not the most proud moment as a drafter, but it's not the worst. You put all that money into freaking Derek Carr, get yourself a legit wide receiver, too, and you're, I mean, you are kind of cooking. So I've heard T. Higgins, Bobby Wagner, and Fletcher Cox have been contracts. Obviously, Bobby Wagner and Fletcher Cox are one-year deals anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but we're hoping we get them, and Fletcher Cox says no, but Higgins and Wagner are here, which... Bobby Weiner is a bit of a steal here for us because we really need a leader at linebacker and we get another veteran. And Fletcher Cox also joins, which hopefully at his age, he should have the mentor tag, which means assuming we do take a DT, which I would imagine we will at some round, uh, we will get that mentorship XP and it'll also help Pickens and I mean, everyone will be happy. So we filled a lot of the needs we had. Got to look in the future a little bit though, just in case the O-line position is going to get rough, which it probably will but in general, I do not like the situation we see. But with Olave, with T. Higgins, Olave is still number one, obviously. With Kamara, I mean, this is an offense that could put up numbers, especially once we switch the scheme, because I think we should. You don't really need to funnel it through Kamara anymore. As we got a bunch of different great talents. We should be spreading this ball around. And then defense, you get just enough from, you know, maybe a rookie edge rusher. Maybe we're okay. Maybe maybe we got this season in us. Maybe this season actually could be a secretively special great one. Or maybe it's going to be really bad and all these one-year guys we have that are going to go are going to make us feel even more sad once they're gone. <laughs> oh, I know it's not something... Well, it's not not an option, but there appears to be insane quarterbacks, especially these top two at least. Uh, if there's an option, maybe you think about taking one because Derek Carr just hasn't been that great. But yeah, I think, uh, it's going to be out of our range and wow, that high. Oh man. I don't know if I really believe in this pass rusher, but I had him who I actually wanted more obviously. And then Mr. Tyler Beaver, who is 6'2", 21 years old, decently athletic with B finesse, B block shed, A to B power, which I don't know what that could be. It could be B, could be A, doesn't matter. I think I have to trade up, though. We are desperate for the edge rush, and 20 to 14 for a guy that looks pretty decent, uh, I think is worth it. So 20 this year and a second round next year for 14, which, I mean, we're hoping we're better than last year, to be fair. Uh, and then with that pick, obviously, we are going to be going with Mr. Beavers. Interesting name, to say the least. Uh, Dennis Hood was also an A to C finesse and power move. Still looks good, but definitely a drop off. Mr. Tyler Beaver, welcome to the squad. And he's hidden. 84 speed, 87 XL. Would love to compare him to the guy that we just missed. I think I would have taken the other guy over Beaver just because he was a little more guaranteed. But I mean, it seems like we landed a good pick. So what can I? What can I really be mad about? And the Bears, are, oh, they didn't actually take the offer. They were like, screw that. That's next year, buddy. Let's trade this, I guess, then. Hopefully that's enough. I guess not. But the Bears are also in a really bad rebuild situation, even worse than us. Uh, we'll be willing to take this trade if I can ever get it. Jeez, man. Thank you. It took a little bit longer than I would have thought, considering, you know, the Niners kind of, you know, they threw that first round at me, and I was like, eh, whatever, I like it. Uh, it's a little early, but we do need two safeties, so I'm actually, I didn't really think about it at the time, uh, but I might actually take both of these safeties. This Bedell guy looks pretty good, but he is a little bit slower, which is why I traded up for Booker. Uh, Doug Booker, 21 years old, six foot tall, you know, very athletic. I mean, look at this, like, super elite athlete, looks good, he's my guy. He is hidden of Elmetrade, and man, he really is good. Wish that speed is a bit higher, though, but yeah. And also, I don't feel like he's wearing number four. <laughs> I feel like the, uh, we already have a guy wearing that. So what are we remaining? So we have no third-round pick, and that is where I have a DT. 
And, you know, kind of late third, early fourth is where I'd like to grab at least a linebacker. There's a guy named Swain who looks good. He's an ADC. I don't really know for a fact. Uh, safety isn't that hard to get, though, is it? Like, Bedell looks decent, but once again, that 40 time is iffy. He's also one year older. He's good across the board. He's probably like 88, 89 speed. And with the B zone, B hit power, he might be decent. Like 75, 76 maybe. Uh, man, I don't know, though. I think we should trade down because we can maybe get Pope and Swain versus just getting one safety who we're not even going to use right away anyways. I don't know these guys think they are, but to get this trade down with the Broncos, I had to do all this crap. In pick seven, I'm hoping our guys are there. Usually a three to four is like, you know, ten, but I have seen them go higher than that, so we'll see. Back-to-back -back picks with that trade. I didn't even actually see who the Broncos went with, in fairness, but let's see what we got. Uh, Pope is still there, thankfully, because that was kind of my pick across the board. And then Swain is still there, dude. And I only put Alex Smith on the board because he's very athletic and his name is Alex Smith. But I think we're going to take Pope and Swain, assuming Swain is as athletic as I I, I remembered him to be. Uh, Terrell Pope, 21 years old, A finesse, and he's he's hidden. Okay, so once again, those are the kind of guys that I expect to be normal, but kind of a Pickens type deal where you just you get dev ups and you're GG'd, you don't have to worry about it. But he's actually hidden right out the gate, which is nice for a guy that, once again, probably isn't starting unless he's a super high overall which would put Fletcher Cox as a uh, you know backup, which isn't the worst thing for him at this point of his career. You know, role player wouldn't be the worst. So four four two, super athletic. You got to do it. You got to do it. Dominic Swain, and there's your normal dev. But eighty eight speed, eighty uh, ninety excel, ninety agility, eighty three jump. He's very athletic. Whatever. Philip Moore is gonna be my guy. He's hidden. That's all I can ask for. I went for the youth. It gets me in trouble a lot, but not this time. That is, by the way, the way that sounded. <laughs> That's not what I meant at all, in the slightest. All right, here we are. Let's see the draft recap. We re Where the hell even are we? We really need that edge rusher to be good, though. That is, like, first and foremost. That edge rusher needs to be good, as he's a day one starter, and uh, obviously everyone else would be great to get the high overall. 80 overall for Doug Booker. Everyone is a 70-plus. See how good Beaver is. Obviously, I'm looking forward to looking at Booker. Uh, but 84 speed, 87, 80 power move. Okay, he's actually a pretty good player. I believe it is a left end we need. And then Derek is just, he was just moved over for some reason. Uh, 56, I guess. Why not? Which I think it, I don't know what we need. Left end, I guess. Dev is, oh, only star, dude. That kind of sucks. But Booker, my dude, 80 overall hidden. 70 man, 80 zone, super athletic. Pretty good. He's pretty good. Let's take a look at that dev. Come on. Is he a generational? Did we draft a generational? We did not only star. That's a little surprising. Uh, 22, I guess. There's a better chance that he's the starting strong safety than he is the free safety because if anyone's going to get re-signed, it would be Matthew, but I'd say probably both are screwed. Don't know the dev of Pope, but what's is that finesse? 76. I guess I'll look at the dev. He's not going to start anyways, but just curious. Just curious, so we don't get shocked if he's like a superstar X Factor or something. With oh, I click no. Oh no, it's number sixty-eight now. But yeah, we definitely landed some okay players. No, definitely landed some okay players. Just some of them not so good. Wow, he is not a good run blocker. Uh, but yeah, some definitely not so great. Uh, specifically with Mister uh, Swain, and then I suppose Pope is. Only normal development trait, or he's, you know, kind of lower overall, only star dev. But, yeah, Swain was not a good pick, but I am curious to see some of the players that we passed on. The quarterbacks are interesting, too. 80 overall core. Are these generationals? Hidden, Brian Homan. 88 medium, 88 short, 96 throw power. Okay, sure. Only star dev, but, I mean, doesn't really even need to develop. He's basically maxed. And Pollard also hit a development trade, 6'5", pretty much the same exact ratings, just slightly different. And this is a hell of a draft class for quarterbacks. Wow. What's his dev? Superstar. So the Lions actually made out better than the team that took a higher quarterback than them. Interesting. What uh, overall? So our guy was also an 80, a running back at 79. Oh, but Dell was also a 78+. plus. Oh, he's only normal. Still a good player, though. So we would have really made out with these safeties. Yeah, I know. I, I said it. Uh, if we would have taken both. But we didn't. It's okay. But like I said, I'm curious about these running backs. They were huge, yet they looked fast. Okay, they weren't there in the sixth. 
Yeah, this was one of them. Both of them actually went back to back. So Jacoby Fitzgerald, yeah, 92 speed, very fast. And then Manny Jackson. Wait, what the hell am I? Oh, yeah, it went by overall, didn't it? That's why it. So they were both good players. They didn't really go back to back. It just seemed like it because I had it like that. Another really fast guy. Cowboys get another running back. We trade Andres Pete to the Panthers for a six round pick. We take on some dead money, but we also get rid of some bad player and old player. So we are not having the best year, but we have some money and we don't have. To my knowledge, a whole lot of players to re-sign. Do I even want any of these guys? I think Pete Warner, especially for the price, a three-year like 16 would be great. That's, I mean, that's actually pretty good. Uh, Tyron Matthew, if I can do a one-year like 15, I'd do it for sure. Ugh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree, but still, I don't want to pay any more. All the olds are gone. Uh, Ruiz, I mean, he's been pretty good, and he's been real chill about it. So, two-year 13. I mean, this guy's him. What can I tell you? He's him. Uh, Adebo is really not him, though. He's 25 years old. I think it's cornerback searching time and free agency. He's just not him. He's not the guy. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Everyone else is backup level. So, uh, I went to the Buccaneers. Didn't work out. Went to the Chiefs. Didn't work out, and we finished season six and eleven along with the. I mean, this season was this team, this division was up for grabs, and uh, there was no grabbing. There was literally no grabbing, uh, and yeah, I mean, this is super L. Even with good playbooks on offense, I mean, let's take a look what the actual stats were. I didn't pay attention to any of it. I just figured we were losing, so I changed it to the Chiefs. Uh oh, Derek Carr. Uh oh. Okay, we did have a decent bit of rushing touchdowns in fairness. Three 1,000-yard receivers with Kraft. Touchdowns are low in general. The touchdowns for receiving were terrible, but a pretty good season across the board. O-line was okay. Pickens is him with 11 sacks. Beaver with only 8.5. What a name. Uh, and then Derek Hall with only 6. Cox with 5.5. I, I know all about that. Uh, 71%. For the kicking, 40 man has sucked, but I just paid him a two-year 4.6 because he was kind of cheap. Any award win? I don't think so, right? Like, this is kind of a bad... Oh, the MVP of the league was Homan. Full MVP. Forget, like, just some awards. He won the whole thing as a rookie. He didn't care. But obviously, with a season like that, Derek Carr does not get a uh, redo on his overall. I did change him to a 78 overall for this season because he kind of deserved it. That season, not really. You know, touchdowns were down. Picks were still pretty damn high. I mean, that is about as mid as you could ask for. And the 8-9 and nine division winning Tampa Bay Buccaneers are facing off against the Raiders of all teams, who just got rid of Carr, obviously, and do win in fairness. So we have a little bit of money, but we also have a little bit of mid. Let's see if we had any dev ups on offense. We did not. I was looking around. It's hard to tell because you actually have so many different names moving around. And is that what Derek Carr looks like after regression? 76 overall? That's not terrible, to be fair. He is negative two throw power, negative two short. Negative two throw power is extremely harsh, though. And then defensively, any DevOps? Uh, Tyron Matthew, I think, actually went to X Factor. Looking to re-sign him if I can. And no one else went up in Dev, it would appear. So, yeah, I mean, we do. We will have some money, though. That's definitely a positive. And uh, we'll see. We're really hoping there's a corner there. If there's a decent corner, maybe, like, one linebacker... We're looking okay, right? We, we're probably going to re-sign Tyron. Well, we can't re-sign it, but we're probably going to franchise take Tyron Matthew and give it another season. We have 84 mil, Tyron Matthew, 18 mil tag. How actually good is he, though? 18 mil tag, 89 zone. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's a little costly, but it is a one-year deal anyways. So, Tyron Matthew, welcome back on the franchise tag. Adebo, sorry. And everyone else is kind of mid. So we have $65 million. We need a corner. We need a linebacker. We could use a left tackle. Aaron Donald would be interesting, but I think he's one of those guys that just isn't going to be a free agent. I think he's, you know, a ram for life or he retires. Uh, as far as, like, all the signings go, ooh, Greg Newsom would be a great addition. I think I'm paying Greg Newsom. The only thing that sucks is that he is red interest, so this could be a massive overpayment. In the open market, he'd be looking at least at a four-year 75, probably as an 86 overall. I'd be willing to do it. I don't know if that's enough still, though. And it kind of is. I might just do the four-year 80. I know it seems like a lot, but 
I think I'm going to put the four-year 80 on, look at what the draft looks like, because I think that's obviously a huge influencer, and then probably just sit on this. If it's, I mean, four years, four-year 80 is a lot, but he is him. Like, he's his man coverage just needs to get up. Six foot tall, 95 speed with 90 zone is crazy. And then as far as linebacker, it doesn't really seem like this is going to happen. And Taylor Decker looks great, but he allowed 10 and then 14 sacks. So why would I want him? You know, he looks really good, but like, why would I want him if he sucks? You know, that's la- you know that's more than Penny, and Penny doesn't have those ratings, so I'm just saying. And it really sucks, because I would love to get a running back. If ETN, to be fair, doesn't have an offer, I mean, he's about as close as you're going to get to a Camara in free agency, it seems. I'm a little surprised his catching's that low, to be honest. Aaron Jones would be cool, but he's like 30, so it like, kind of defeats the purpose, because we're literally trying to get a running back, because Camara's probably going to be gone soon. Kind of want to see what Travis Etienne's looking like. Could pull ourselves a Dallas Cowboys situation. I mean, that looks pretty good. I mean, it's decent enough. I am I may be willing to pay this five-year deal. I'd do a four-year 30. That's. I mean, that's still kind of costly for a team that doesn't technically need running back yet. But Kamara at 30 and only Superstar. I mean, I kind of want to set this thing up for the future. So, cornerback isn't, like, the strongest, not the weakest... I mean, if we can get these two guys, I'm just, I'll am just i just be happy with it. And we do. So we have the future at running back. We have the now at corner, which is a lot of money in fairness. We do have no second round pick, but overall I'm going to try to trade down to like 20, uh, similar to last draft, and hope for the best. The Buccaneers, even though it's interdivisional, are kind of giving us the juice here. But the Packers are not too bad either, and it's all this year. So I'm going to actually go with the Packers. And because I don't technically need anything this season, I'm not really willing to trade up. Whoever's there, if there's someone there, I'm going to make a play. If not, we trade down again, I think. Uh, quarterback, I don't really care too much. ETN is still there, which is an interesting pick because ET isn't necessarily a need, but this guy could... Oh, man, I forgot about how fast he was. didn't think he was that fast, though. Uh, you know, is an option. Cornerback's an option. And my safety is still there, and he's a big dude. 6'2", 21 years old, just fast enough. Yeah, I guess I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him. Jamal Wilkerson, and he's also hidden. 92 speed, 90 excel. A little bit different than Booker, but looks to be another decent safety, I suppose. And I didn't show, but we moved up nine spots for a fourth round pick, which we are going to be taking the linebacker more. Take another chance at another outside linebacker. That's really the best option for uh you know off ball here so i mean i'm not really sure what i'm supposed to do outside of it i scouted him further too and it still didn't give me the zone but a to b is pretty close doesn't look as athletic as the last guy but a awareness i mean gonna take another stab at it and hope for the best and this time he actually is hidden so it looks like we have a starter two of six spots we trade a fifth next and a seventh this year with the eagles schwartz went which means we are going to be taking the remainder and do we actually have another third? I think we actually, I did see that actually. Uh, he is Mr. Tom Marshall. Probably looked the most safe out of all of them. 22 years old though for a guy that's not going to start this season. It's a little iffy, but hidden development trade. Our new left tackle, it seems. And call me crazy, but I think this is a move you would do in real life, right? A 4-5-6 quarterback with great throw power. He's like a super poor man's Anthony Richardson, if you will. And everyone's going to be starting to compare it now. But Connor Wilcox is going to be our guy. 93 throw power, 86 speed, 89 excel. This is a guy you would love to use in a franchise. But as a rebuild, I don't know if he'll ever be anything. But he's 21, so gives you an option. It's one of those situations where it's like, I don't really have anyone I need there. And even though this rebuild's all about Derek Carr, the moment he is unusable is the moment we call it a rebuild. But... I think that's a very realistic move. You know, it's you know we're definitely down the line here on that contract. It's not like that contract's never ending. You know, we're pretty much. I don't know if it would be this season or maybe the next season, but we'd be pretty much like able to get rid of them if we wanted to. All right, draft recap. Did we have anyone we're starting here? I think they're all future players, right? And safety seventy four. So he's not like Booker, but still okay. And then oh yeah, this linebacker will start actually seventy four for Marshall, sixty seven for the quarterback. Oof, what are his ratings, though? Yeah, he is raw, raw. That is... What's his trigger happy? I don't know if trigger happy is good. I think it's like... It's like below average, which isn't like the worst thing. But Jamal Wilkerson, I suppose, would actually be the strong safety, and then we're going to move Booker to free safety here. 
Uh, but not... Oh, yeah, we can, actually, because uh, Booker's actually, like, literally the starter. So, Jamal Wilkerson, let's take a look at the dev, though. Why not? Let's take a look at the dev. Was there anyone else that I had in the draft? I guess I want to look at the quarterback. Star dev there. And then the left tackle will... Or the guard will be left tackle. Did we check our last hidden development trade alignment? Maybe he's superstar. Maybe this guy's kind of irrelevant now. I don't even know, but left tackle with his dev being star. It's either way, though. Still super potential. And 80 overall quarterback again. Oh, my Lord. In development trade, Ethan Burton. 89 medium and short. Deep accuracy is not as great. Throw power is decent. What is his uh, oblivious sense of pressure? Eh. Eh. Let's take a look at the dev. Did we see a juicer or not? Superstar. Okay, he's one of the better ones. One of the better ones. And then Roberts, 74 overall, hidden as well. Uh, accuracies for medium and short, very good as well. Throw power is definitely lacking in comparison, though, from the last, like, four of these decent quarterbacks we've seen. I don't think this guy really qualifies. The other guys were, like, 80. Although he's superstar, and he's wearing number four in New York. Also, to be fair, I didn't actually check our linebacker, who I don't know what position he's going to play. Inside linebacker is a little... Uh... Black Shed's weak. Zone coverage is weak. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. We didn't check his dev. because <laughs> Maybe check the guy that we're actually... Any superstar that we're actually starting this year. I guess he's middle linebacker. It's very rare that we actually start a rookie like this. But it's going to happen. We're stuck with him. But while we're weak at positions like linebacker, we're very strong at corner, wide receiver, running back. Tight end's all right. O-line solid. All right, here we go. Everything uh, on the team is kind of getting better every season, uh, except for the kind of main guy from the show. He is still young, though, so I will allow of a Derek Carr boosting, if you will, if it is warranted, which I hope it is. I mean, he's got all the talent in the world. I mean, at this point, if you look at this roster, considering the offense, considering the defense, this is better than he's had in, in uh, Vegas, if you will. It's not like it's been there that long for Vegas, but... Definitely better than he's had. You know, two good running backs, two really good wide receivers, a decent tight end, and a solid offensive line with a defense that should be able to perform. I know we don't really have necessarily superstars on this defense outside of Lattimore and technically Matthew, but there's a lot of potential, and, you know, now I'm starting to think about it. This is actually almost the exact same defense that he's had in, in <laughs> with the Raiders except a worse pass rush. Hey, look at him showing his beaver. Told you I'm here to be great coach. Here's 10k XP. Why not? Wait, did he actually complete it? Did he complete it? Wait, what? Oh, he gets both. It's been so long since I've had one of these. And he wow. Okay. My beaver. He might he might need the S at the end of his name because he is multiple beaver at this rate. He is the beave. He is the man. What do you got for power rusher? And a speed at this rate, I mean, the AI is going to give him power rusher anyway, so I might as well go run stopper, try to get some block shed. Nice! Three to block shed. He's him! 93 power move, 78 block shed, 85 speed, superstar dev. Man, this is going to be like the most successful, like, sucky rebuild ever, because, like, Derek Carr is probably never going to get us to the playoffs. So, Derek Carr is playing so badly right now, I think I'd have seen a first for me. Maybe I have just haven't paid attention enough. Uh, a scenario saying struggling quarterback. So, uh, yeah, that puts into perspective how great he's playing for us. Oh, these youngsters are going off, dude. Doug Booker is a superstar now. I really wish Derek Carr and the you know the team in general was playing better so any of this mattered because it's going to just be a failed rebuild, but we're getting some pretty awesome dev-ups. $92 million. Who do we have to pay? Somebody, surely. Olave, uh, Camara, Penning. I just, Penning is just not him. We have a lot of money, though, so like I'm not really sure why, but... We do. I mean, I guess we have drafted a lot of starters. Uh, Trevor Penning sucks, and he's playing like trash, so we're going to let him go. Uh, we are going to pay Alave as much as possible. Well, maybe not as much as possible, but as low as possible, as soon as possible. A five-year 108? Ugh, you definitely could, but let's stop threatening people so quickly into the re-sign process, if you don't mind. And Alante Taylor is pretty damn versatile, so two-year seven? Nice. Finally, somebody's on my side. This is getting a bit old, I'm going to be honest with you. It's getting a little old. Just a, just a little old. I mean, we're losing, like, every single game we play. It's pissing me off. I just don't understand. Is it just Derek Carr completely? Let's take a look at the season. I mean, it wasn't bad out the gate, and then we just lost five in a row. 
I mean, we ran the Chiefs. We ran the Bucks. I ran Dallas at the end. We lost two in a row. I don't know what we can run to fix this team. Maybe the defense is worse than I thought. I don't know. But let's take a look at the numbers. Doesn't look great for Derek Carr. I'm just saying, he doesn't get fixed. It's you just deal with what you got. Higgins was decent. Kraft was better than normal. Lave was awful. Booty was terrible ever since we've drafted him. Trevor Penning gave up 27 sacks. Holy crap. Pickens is a god. The edge is terrible. What is happening around here? We got to change the schemes completely. Like, I'm, I don't care about the awards. Let's go to the offseason. Although, if Derek Carr is gone, I'm done. I'm just, you know, I'll accept a rebuild loss because the whole point was rebuild with Derek Carr, and he has not played well right now. He's playing at best average, which, I mean, they knew what they were getting into, right? They were hoping for the upside, but there was a good chance it was going to be averageness. And let me tell you, ironically enough, the Raiders are killing it in this rebuild. I'm just saying, it's not often that the Raiders do this well in sim, but the one time they don't have Derek Carr... Although they lose both Super Bowls anyways that they were in. 8-9 and nine, Dallas wins the Super Bowl. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they? 87 overall Saints can't make the playoffs. 8-9 and nine, uh, you know, Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Why not? Uh, DevOps, not even Higgins gets one. Not even Kraft gets one. Derek Carr is a 73 overall. Uh, defensively, did we have all these devs already? I'm pretty sure we actually did. But here we are. Pickens has been him, though. You can't deny it. He's been him. And with an upgrade like that, he's even more him than he normally is. Jesus. 85 power move, 97 finesse. Holy. Holy. But yeah, I'm not really sure what we can do. I really don't know. As our players are decent overalls, we have a bunch of decent youthful players. Like Derek Hall has been garbage. And he's like an 84 overall with, you know, pretty decent ratings. What do I do? Like, I, I don't know how I can get around that. Safeties are kind of set, so Tyron Matthews gone no matter what, I think. Uh, and we did get Alave a on a five-year 118, which off the top of my head, I can't really think what the hell that number is, but it's decent. It's like 25-plus per. And Tyron Matthews still good. I mean, unless he's, for some reason, like the main guy, like forcing us to just be bad, I guess we'll keep him if we can. One year 14, he's still good. I mean, if he's still good, why get rid of him? Same with Kamara, to be honest, but... Outside of like a one-year eight, I can't really do much better than that. One-year eight? There's no way. Yeah, there's just no way. But we're still going to try to offer him in free agency. Maybe nobody wants him. It's just like nobody should want Trevor Penning. If we can land like a god-tier left tackle or something, I'll go for one. But it just seems like linemen are just a lost cause. Free agents, we kind of know what we need. And uh, let's see who's there. Terry McLaurin, don't really need that position. Kamara, oh, he has an offer. I wanted him back, dude. Trent Brown is kind of a one-year situation, so maybe if he's played well, Jordan Davis is cool. Yeah, I haven't really paid attention to our number two DT. Jordan Davis, maybe not the scheme fit, but depending on how actually good he is, I just don't see Philadelphia letting him go, right? Yeah, he just doesn't even fit what we need anyways. He's already got a good block shutter. I guess uh, Pickens is kind of multi-leveled, but still. Also, Kyle Hamilton, the linebacker, could be a move. Just saying, we really need a linebacker. I'd pay him to play it. Look, I just don't know what you want from me. 93 power move, and the guy just, like, he just sucks. And he's got insane strength for an edge. Like, 88 strength is not a common thing for edge. First year, great. Second year, eh. This year, terrible. And I didn't change the defensive scheme one bit. All right, we have offered three 83 overalls with none of them other than Tyler Smith being starters. See if we get any of them, and we get all three. Okay, so Tyler Smith, I think, is worth it, even though we have a rookie in the mix, you know, waiting to start. You just can't get 80 across the board often, and that's exactly what you get with Tyler Smith, which is, once again, super rare. He's also super strong. Kirby Joseph, three-year 21 for a guy that's superstar dev, great depth all across the board. And then Brian Robinson, a three-year 12 for a solid power back as a backup. I mean, we have depth. We have starters. We just suck. I don't know what to do. Like, we took so long to, like, to do good that the freaking division is good all of a sudden. Like, that's how long it's been. All right, so we have picked nine, like, for the billionth time. Uh, I kind of want to look at all the teams that need quarterbacks ahead of us. So the Vikings, Broncos, Cardinals, Eagles, Texans, and then just snipe. Because there's a decent-looking quarterback, and even though that's not technically the point of this rebuild, well, we're screwed. <laughs> Vikings aren't going to be. Of course, the guy isn't the number one projected, but he looks the best, in my opinion. So if he's gone, I'm sad. And he doesn't go first. Okay. 
So there should be no team that actually takes quarterback up until the Dolphins. Uh, I don't know about the Bears now, but we'll take a look at them real quick. Uh, there should be no team. I mean, I looked at all these teams. They all have insane quarterbacks. We're going to take a look at the Bears before we go, though, just in case they need a quarterback, which they might. They got Fields, and they just paid him. But it is Madden. Knowing the game, they're going to grab him. Watch. Let's see it. Let's see him grab him. Let's see it. Oh, they actually took Schaffer. So because of that, I think I have no choice but to take this quarterback. Because Schaffer was my other guy. He was an edge rusher. And obviously, uh, Derek Hall is not playing well right now. So, yeah. I mean, I think the quarterback's our choice. Once again, in the terms of this rebuild, it's really stupid. It doesn't help us. But in terms of reality, which that corner is insane, by the way, this is what they would do. I mean, this is, I mean, they would probably trade up because, I mean, it's insane that this guy's still here. But A short, A under pressure, B medium, B deep, 6-4, elite throw power, a little bit of speed. Looks similar to the guys we seen earlier. Gonna go for him. Nick Escobar hit a development trade, which is a win. 94 throw power. Is it finally the Saints' turn? We give him a fourth-round pick to move up, what, eight spots? And this guy looks okay. Like, he's really raw, but six foot one, 21 years old with a 4-2-8 and all those other great drills. But wide receiver just far from a need. Whereas J.D. Duvall, in like a year or two's time, we need a new corner. And he could be great by then. Ooh, normal dev. But at 6'3", 21 years old, 95 speed, 93 excel, 93 change of direction. That is pretty busted, though. And with this pick, you can never have enough linemen. Guy looks pretty good. Kadron or Kadron Pierman. Pretty athletic, super strong. 22 years old, though, which worries me because... We've already had a bunch of linemen so far that just haven't played that maybe we should even trade off. And this seems like a crazy risk, but there's a decent looking edge rusher that, once again, our edge sucks right now. So if he has any sort of potential of being decent on the line, I want to take that shot on. Mr. Tyler Bates, okay athleticism, normal development trait though, so probably an L in this case. All right, draft recap. What did we land overall wise? Ooh, quarterback's only a 74. Duvall is a 75, a center is 73, 69 for Bates, and the randoms I took a little bit after that, not so great. How good was Bates? 76 finesse move, you can live with that in fairness. And then I suppose, let's take a look at the quarterback, Mr. Nick Escobar. Damn, he's nowhere near as good as the other guys, but he's still okay, and I suppose, you know, he's, he's decent. He probably should start over Derek Carr, to be honest, but it's not the point of this rebuild, start of element trade, so he is still kind of raw anyways. And then J.D. Duvall, 76 man, 72 zone coverage. You can definitely work with that. Alante Taylor seems to be more of a backup safety now than a corner. Start off this offseason, or the end of the offseason, Will. We're going to trade Bass to the Browns for an 89th pick overall. It is a team that is definitely uh, close and uh, need a guard. So, T.J. Bass, we're going to start more of the youngster. Don't have to pay Bass, at least. Season 4 and potentially the end of the rebuild as Derek Carr is a lowly 73 overall. Uh, 35 years old now with pretty good ratings. It's just his throw power sucks. So unless he puts on a random, magical, unexpected season, this go is going to be the end of the road for him. And even if it wasn't, we're only doing five seasons anyway. You know, rebuilds are five seasons max. I don't care what anyone says. DBs are the best in the league. D-line should be better than they are. And the linebackers are 80 across the board. This is a team that should not be as bad as it is. Simply put, it just shouldn't be. So I actually just don't know what's going on in this rebuild. Uh, Derek Carr is actually playing really well this season, yet the game just doesn't care. And we are playing atrociously. Uh, Zach Pickens, a six-year 120 isn't enough, apparently. Lattimore, we just talked about. He's definitely like a one-year candidate. Same with Ramchek. Derek Hall, I don't know if he's playing well this season, but... Yeah, we got a lot of guys to resign, but like, are many of them worth it? Not particularly, especially this guy right here, even though he's not playing badly. It's just the team is losing, and there's no one else to blame. And honestly, um, I might end the rebuild here. Uh, I really don't know what to do. I, I really don't. Like, we're 6-11. We're and 11. I've tried every playbook under the sun. We'll say the Raiders playbook. We won two out of three recently, so maybe maybe there's something there. But, like, I just don't get it. I really don't. Is it just the Saints roster? I will say it's not often you see a team like the Saints winning the Super Bowl, but like, okay, let's maybe, I haven't actually looked at the matchup. So the Falcons might be, to be fair, I will say in this rebuild, especially when you have the real life class we used, there are a lot of good quarterbacks. Like if we were to go through all these teams real quick, 
Uh, we would see some pretty sick quarterbacks, I would think. Like, Derek Carr is probably the worst starting quarterback in the entire league. Like, he's probably not even close. Let's take a look. So, there's one, two, three, technically four, five, ninety nines, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen quarterbacks that are ninety overall above, and like. 60% of them were, like, from this, like, rebuild itself. And then you have other teams that are very close anyways. We have by far the worst starting quarterback, which Derek Carr, at least at the time I looked, wasn't playing badly. But maybe, like I've had, you know, kind of suspicions about with offensive linemen play, maybe it's not just about how well they physically play, but their actual overalls that give you a better chance in sim. But let's take a look at Derek Carr's numbers, which... I mean, they didn't finish as well, but when I was looking at it, I was debating on replacing him. It was like week seven, and he had 19 touchdowns at two picks. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. ETN was all right. Receivers were pretty decent outside of, you know, UT. Uh, tackle play, I mean, O-line was okay considering Madden Sim. Pickens has been amazing. But these, like, these edge rushers, what do I do? I've tried six different 4-3 schemes, and nothing works. A 97 overall power move guy finishes with what? Six sacks? Was it less than that, actually? Six sacks. Derek Hall finishes with six and a half sacks, and he has, what's his, 98 power move, 85 finesse move. What do you do? These guys are insane, and yet we can't do anything. Like, it's just, I don't get it. Uh, the kicker wasn't great. I mean, it's just like, what do you do, dude? Actually, I haven't paid attention to the numbers. So, 26 in offense. Let's take a look. Come on. Stats and awards. Come on. Come on. So 26 in offense. What about the defense? I guess it goes points scored first, doesn't it? Or no, it doesn't actually. 20 in the D. So, so we suck is the uh, the grand kind of like wrap up, if you will, is we just, we're just awful. So I suppose we're no matter what going to let Derek Carr fall apart and just croak it, go wherever he wants. And we're going to try this rookie quarterback out and just see if we even make the playoffs with him. Win or lose, I don't care. It's it's a failed situation I'm not trying to prove some point. Oh, the Raider, you know, the the Saints made a stupid move. Maybe this Derek Carr thing is going to work out. All it takes is one or two good drafts, and the worst teams for salary cap, it, it just goes away because you have insane draft players, you know? That's all it takes. Of course, the Falcons in the Super Bowl, the Titans in the Super Bowl, our division has represented the NFC a couple of times now. Wish it was us, but it's not. And uh, the winner, the winner is the Titans. So, a lot of representing, but I don't think there was a lot of winning. Uh, but let's, I suppose, take a look at any potential dev ups we had, which I don't know. Maybe a defender. I don't know. Pickens is like the only decent player on the entire team. Uh, O-line. Kraft goes up to Superstar, actually, which is kind of cool. We just paid him a five-year... I don't even know what it was. It was like a five-year 52. Oh, yeah. Five-year 52, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the team. That's the team as of right now. Didn't pay Hall because he sucks, but, like, is his overall good? Good enough to, like, give him a nod or give the team the nod at times? I don't know. But I'm playing it the way that I would play it in real life. If you're not performing, get the hell out. That is also the last time I'm taking Derek Hall because he just, I don't know why, is awful in sim. Like, it's not the first time we've had Derek Hall. We, don't, we haven't had him a lot. But every time we have had him, he has been awful. And I'm going to tag Lattimore. We got some money. And I uh, want to keep the best players around. And we have about 68 mil to work with. I'm not going to go crazy in free agency. But if there's an edge rusher, you best believe we are going to go for them. I can't wait for Escobar to just kill it. I didn't want to replace Derek Carr because there would just be somebody be like, Don't play with Derek Carr. You didn't. It's like, who cares, dude? And Derek Hall, of course, is the only guy. Miles Murphy's there as well, though, in fairness. Uh, whoever is the better performer, I'm just going to throw the money in. I mean, looking at this, I suppose Miles Murphy's technically better with that block shed. How has he actually played? I can't imagine he's been great with that overall. 7.5. I mean, you'd have a bigger body down there, I suppose. Um, well, I don't know. Whoever wants to sign, I'm going to offer a probably similar offer. Let's do a three-year... A three-year 60, and whoever has the higher value, uh, we remove the other one, I suppose. But let me tell you, Derek Hall being the guy that we actually drafted, it would be nicer to actually rock with him. So Derek Hall is actually, like, closer, I suppose. The Buccaneers, though, if we were to snipe them, we'd be cooking. Because, like, we're going to take away a player of our division rival, but 
I think at this point it's all about making us better and not really worrying about other teams. All right, are we going to get Derek Hall back? We do. So, I mean, costs us pretty much what we'd had to pay anyways. It was like a 3 or 50 in the end with low interest. It would have probably been at best like a 3 or 56, so who cares? Uh, but, yeah, it's, I mean, there's a weak free agency class. We have 50 mil to spend, so kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. And Dalton Kincaid, superstar dev, looking good, but just not a need. So we're only doing this one final season anyways, but – I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this may be a generational player. 4 2 4 40, a bunch of different, you know, 43.6 bench press or uh, vertical. That's a lot of bench. 22 bench press, broad, three cone. It's all insane. Eddie Samuel, all of those ratings with 6 3 frame. If we can get up there, I might make the play just because it's kind of fun and Higgins needs a contract. If you land a generational, maybe you don't need. A, uh, you know, to re-sign the guy, but there also is another, you know, decent edge rusher in George Nixon, you know, 279, if I'm not mistaken, he's a really good 40 time, yeah, 4640 at 279 is, is pretty good in Madden, at least, in real life, it's kind of like mid these days, but, uh, let's see what the Rams do, maybe we'll make a trade up, maybe not, we'll see what's up, and Nixon goes, what about the Patriots, the wide receiver, they don't take wide receiver, what would it take to get from 8 to three this kind of seems fair to me pick eight pick 40 and a 79 overall star 24 year old left tackle for pick three which we are going to be taking a generational wide receiver at least i think in mr eddie something what's his name eddie eddie what wow that's really great eddie samuel i will say usually the generational is our a but a six three two four two has to be has to be let's see what we got and, oh, okay, he's 99 jumping, 94 speed, 96 Zell. Bit slower than I would have thought, but at 6'3", that's a crazy frame, crazy athleticism. And I would still, I'd still feel confident that that's generational. If not, that's a generational sell. We trade a second and a fourth next for 65 from the Rams, and I'm going to try to trade with the Patriots to get that pick as well as I have two players I want. So that is what I'm going to do. Maybe getting a little reckless because I kind of feel like the rebuild's over. It's a final season, but... So far, that first move seemed to be a good one, right? Like, we only cost it a second-round pick to land what I would, once again, still suspect to be a generational. Seems pretty obvious. But let's take a look. So, who I wanted was Mr. Jonathan Odin, who I didn't expect to actually be here. Obviously, he's a 2-3, to three, A tackle, A finesse, A to C block shed. 22, in fairness, but pretty athletic. We'll take him, Jonathan Odin. Who is normal? Love it. So he's not going to get a start. I just figured the DT2 we have, he's just not really putting up numbers, whereas Pickens has. He's just been a god ever since joining, which is really impressive, actually. And then the other guy was Mr. Spencer Blakely. Really solid potentials there, and he's 21. Welcome to the team. Hidden development trade. Now, how much will it matter? I do not know, but I am obviously curious to see if we did land ourselves a generational. We should know pretty fairly quickly. And man, this has been lagging because I've been doing this recording for so long in a row. And what do we got? And yeah, he definitely, I would assume, is a generational player. 82 overall, Eddie Samuel. Uh, release is 87, catching is 86, 81 catch of traffic, 94 spec catch, 99 jump. This guy's insane except for his injury and toughness, but wow. Okay, I mean, it's pretty, oh, where number four that is. Too soon, dude. Even though I really hate him too, too soon. He is, yeah, generational. He's, he's pretty good. Not the best receiver I've ever seen in a draft, but definitely one of the better ones I've ever drafted. And I don't really care about these other guys. They're all backups. I mean, even Eddie's a backup at this rate, but I suppose gives you an option with Higgins, which I suppose after paying Alave recently, you maybe let him go. I don't know. Best wide receiver group in the league. Can't wait for us to miss the playoffs again. If we don't make the playoffs one time, I'd be so mad, dude. I also don't think I've ever seen a wide receiver rookie, a mentor rookie. I'm going to go with a median impact. I kind of want to see what you get for this. What is it? Like, I actually want to see, like, how much XP or ratings you get, because obviously we don't really care too much about long-term, because he's already an X-Factor. All right, I wanted to get in there quickly. Dev is almost always a better option, but since he's an X-Factor, like I said, there's no real point of doing it. Get a chance to actually see this now. What is the... Wow! God, EA's so good. 
So you could either choose a dev up or 2,500 XP. I was thinking it was going to be closer to like 20k XP. If it's 20k XP, that's a decision. That's definitely a decision, especially if someone's like really low overall. That's a decision. But 2,500 versus a dev? Bro, come on. All right, just like my other Saints rebuild, going the distance, but the other one at least had playoff success. Derek Carr, Mad L. Mad L, no competition. The roster was still being built pretty nicely around him. He just never got into the playoffs. They just needed a guy to just do slightly better than average. Couldn't do it, and here we are with the final year. To the playoffs, I have no idea if we're in them. We were not looking great, but that was many weeks ago. And 7-10! and What a rebuild! This was a success. Super fun stuff. Lovely. Changed the playbook a billion times. Didn't matter. Changed both playbooks a billion times. Just didn't matter. Simply didn't matter. Simply didn't matter. Super fun stuff. Escobar, I mean, very similar to what, you know, Derek Carr was doing. Uh, Kraft, the best wide receiver here. Uh, Samuel is the number three. Uh, T. Higgins, we actually couldn't afford going forward. So really clutch that we actually got that generational. Pickens was great as usual. Beaver and Derek Hall were better than normal. And then Pope is just terrible, even though I just paid him. Lattimore was good. I just paid him again. Elliot was the best kicker we had. And then Stonehouse is the best punter we had. Awards I don't care about because we definitely would have won at best one Let's take a look at who wins the Super Bowl, take a look at some of our players, and call this a super fail. Gotta love when you have a really good overall team, and EA just shafts you. Buccaneers in the Super Bowl. Seen a couple of our teams. There's like three at least. Three Super Bowls, maybe four, uh, represented by this division. So maybe just a tough division as well. 38, the Buccaneers win. Fair enough. Let's take a look at our dev ups and our overall players in general, and call it a rebuild, like we said Olave, 96 overall. Uh, Kraft was a... He wasn't always an X-Factor. I think he just got it there. Uh, Olave, very solid. Short route sucks, but... It's the way EA does things, sadly. Uh, quarterback, I guess we'll take a look at. He never really had much of a chance to start other than this season. Definitely has potential. Definitely even, you know, a chance at a future. Uh, two years left on his rookie deal, I believe, as well. So, definitely have a little bit of a chance to keep the team around him for a couple more seasons... Eddie Samuel, the nice couple of route runnings. I mean, he's he's got a bright future ahead of him for sure. Uh, you know, Higgins, we didn't actually develop ourselves, so I don't really care too much about. You know, I, mean, I guess he was okay overall before we got him, and now he's like a god. Kraft's, uh, a, you know, excel in speed and stuff. Didn't really go up, but he's decent. Catching's a bit low, though, for a guy that's killing it and is now an X-Factor. O-line Ryan Ramchek is uh, kind of not looking great. O-line in general, though, didn't really develop too high. Kept a lot of the original guys, in fairness. T. Higgins, really good route running uh, for sure, and medium. Catching is out of this world. Great release as well. Take a look at the defense. Pickens is the man, though. 98 overall for this guy. What a dude. 99 block shed, only 85 power move. Like, what? How is he? Like, he's not 99 block shed, so are they just constantly upgrading block shed and getting, like, nothing, basically? Are they going to show it? Speed? I mean, it kind of seems like it, which is really bad, but it is what it is. He's still insane. I can't believe he did what he did. Beaver and Hall, we already know, are really good. They just didn't play like it. I mean, I'm not even going to look at Hall because Beaver was 97 uh, power move last time anyways, so... I don't know what that's about. Booker actually asked for a lot. It was like a five-year 90. We did, obviously, because he's insane. 90 zone, super athletic, 85 tackle. He's a really good player, and he's young as hell. Uh, what else do we have? Kirby Joseph, we kind of just got, you know, so he didn't really get to play too much. Lattimore finally got to an X-Factor, which is cool. Greg Newsom, I don't really care too much about. And then I suppose we'll take a look at Papoe and Mr. Lionel Moore. Uh, block shed sucks, but he is a god coverage guy. Excel's 94. Speed, not very good, obviously. And then Popoe, 85. overall I don't know why I had to say that. Very good at block shedding in Vernez. Coverage a little iffy. So, we actually did develop the team well. Like, we have guys that, you know, are filling in for other people's mistakes, right? Like, Pickens is a decent power move guy. Great block shedder. Pope is not a great block shedder. Great pass rusher, though. Edge is really good at pass rush. Corners are great across the board. Safeties are great across the board. Linebackers, you got a block shedder, you have a coverage guy. And then Werner's an in-between. Receivers, you got the best in the entire league. Solid running back. O-line's at least average to above average. And yet, we barely even got over 500, if any season. 
And EA just happily did it with a smile on their face. Once again, it may be skewed because it's been so long now. Nope, we're still one of the better overall teams. Like, 90 seems to be like the peak highest overall, and yet we couldn't make the playoffs with this team. GGA, GGA. Uh, anyways, that's going to be it. I don't know the next time I'm going to upload. Definitely not until Thursday. Maybe not until Friday. Two rebuilds in a row is a lot of recording and editing. So if you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, really appreciate your continued support, especially since you made it to the end of the video. I appreciate it a ton. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Jump Pierre. Second channel, Pierre Plays. Uh, should be a Hogwarts Legacy episode tomorrow. So it's like, don't know when I'm going to have one on the main channel. Cause, you know, a lot of editing. It's like, Hogwarts, I'm a wizard. <laughs> If you guys have any ideas for rebuilds in the future you would like to see, I think, you know, there was some, like, talks about Tom Brady going to Miami. While I don't really believe those are true statements, could be a, a fun rebuild to do. Tom Brady of the Dolphins, because who knows what Tua, but I don't know. We'll see. I kind of don't want to think about rebuilds for a bit of time, a little while at least, because, uh, yeah, a lot of simming, a lot of simming. But that's about it. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, do all those things. Didn't enjoy, leave, di leave a dislike. It's up to you. That's about it, though. Thanks for watching. Once again, I want to hear what do you guys think. Derek Carr, win or L? It's not even that he's not like the greatest in the world. I just think the look at the roster and the money and all that, I think it's a bad decision. But we'll see. That's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys come back for the next video. But until next video, like I said, Thursday at earliest, maybe Friday. 